What's up, everybody? Back with another study here in the book of Enoch. And today, Lord willing, we're going to be going through chapters 95 through 98. And here in chapters 95 through 98, we're going to see about the judgment on our oppressors. On the people who are persecuting the people of God, the sinners in this world. And I don't, I don't just mean any sinner. I mean... Uh, it's more specifically geared toward those in power. Those who not only, well, not only those in power, but as we, we're going to see a lot in this chapter, and as we've seen in other places in the book of Enoch, which isn't, and it's not, doesn't mention as much in the Bible. Stuff like this, as far as the judgment on the, on the persecutors of God's people. I mean, there's de definitely a good amount of scripture on that, but it mentions specifically here in the book of Enoch, and we're going to um, see some of that here in chapters 95 through 98, and even 99 and maybe beyond. I, I looked at a little bit at 99, and 99 is still on the same thing, still speaking about the same thing. But God led me to do 95 through 98. So before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, the body and soul. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn our right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. Born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, the death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins, that second death. See, the first death is just the body. The second death is body and soul. But that second death we deserve in the lake of fire, he died for us on the cross. So that through him, our sin is taken away from us, or through him we receive eternal life because he took that death for us. But through him also our sin is taken away from us and we receive his perfection that he lived out. He lived a perfect life. Repent and believe the gospel. It's because it's not, it's not through our own works. We can't earn a right standing with God. We would have had to live a perfect life. But he lived that perfect life for us. And he lived that perfect life for us. And then took the punishment for us that we deserve. And the righteousness is imputed. The forgiveness is imputed through him, not through us. It's through his sacrifice. And if you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later. And through his sacrifices, offering you eternal life. If you believe that. And you ask God to forgive you. And you truly mean it. He will forgive you. And he will give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow him. You've got to be willing to give your life to him. The Holy Spirit change, changes your heart and leads you to follow him. And let me just say this. If you haven't seen my... Uh, my last words of Jesus study, Luke 14 through 18, check it out. Go back and watch that. It's on my YouTube channel at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Larry Newport. Check that out if you haven't seen it. But he, he gave his life for us. And if we believe that, if we believe that he's the Messiah, that he's the Savior, and that through him we receive eternal life, through his sacrifice. And we give our life to him. We ask him to forgive us. And as far as giving our life to him. That's where repent comes in. The word repent means to. Have a change of heart or change change of mind. It means to. Um, most of the time. we Most of the time we see repent in the Bible. It means to turn away from your sins and turn to God. Basically give your life to him. Dedicate your life to him. Be willing to forsake your sins, your old life, and follow him. 
repent, and believe the gospel. And looks like some type of what's called street theater over here potentially. Um, I'll just leave it at that. That's why you heard that horn, that horn, that horn beep. But uh, repent and believe the gospel if you believe. And the sacrifice of Jesus, that, that he gave his life for you. In order to give you eternal life, if you believe that. And you call upon him to forgive you. Forgive you for your sins. To save you. And you truly mean it. If you believe that. And you ask him to forgive you. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. And he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Can't even imagine Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And uh, yeah, let me just uh, let me just get started with the video. Starting here in chapter ninety-five of the book of Enoch, we should just have two chap or two uh, studies left after this. We'll be going through one, uh, if we go through 90, 98, we'll be going through chapters, I believe, 99 through 104. And then I think the last three chapters are, is another fragment of the book of Noah to end the book of Enoch. But here we are in chapter 95. Hallelujah. And sorry for the... Just trying to get this uh, cricket to shut up. It didn't start till uh, right when I was getting ready to do the study. But chapter ninety-five of the Book of Enoch. Oh, that my eyes were a cloud of waters, that I might weep over you. And pour down my tears as a cloud of waters. So that I might rest from my trouble of heart. Who has permitted you to practice reproaches and wickedness? And so judgment shall overtake you sinners. So they're speaking about the sinners. And how they're going to be destroyed. See, it's the will of God. For all to come to repentance. For not anybody to be destroyed. But many are going to be destroyed. Many. Many people are oppressing the people of God. And we're going to see more of that, like I said, here in a little bit. When speaking about the sinners. And this has happened since. I mean, pretty much for all time. It's happened uh, throughout all of history, but... But definitely picked up in the time of Jesus and afterwards the persecution and us living here in these last days. There's much persecution as well. And a lot of the persecution that goes on now is, at least in America... I mean, there's some countries that ban Bibles. There's some countries that ban Christianity. If you, I mean, you can be killed if you if you're a Christian. But we have a good here in America. But there is persecution here in America, and it's done mainly through um, under the table programs. And I'm a victim of one of these programs, unfortunately. Actually, fortunately, because Hallelujah, all glory to God, they're just blessing me through their persecution. 
what people call gang stalking. You know, it's a, it's a new world order, beast kingdom, antichrist kingdom uh, program, you know, run ultimately by Satan, fallen angels, and demons down through governments and militaries and private security companies and all the way down to your to neighborhood watch groups, your neighbors, and even family. And I'm not saying any, I believe any of my family member it, members are, are involved in this, but... Um, down to that point, down all the way to your friends and family. And, you know, it's, you know, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's literal, it's not like open persecution, it's, it's, it's psychological warfare. It's, it's designed in a way, they do it in a way to where if you talk about it, it makes you sound crazy. It makes you sound like mentally ill if you talk about like the stuff that's actually going on. And it's designed that way. It's, uh, it's designed to where, like I said, if you, if you talk about it, it makes you sound crazy. It's designed to make you go crazy, to make you lash out at these people but praise God for his strength, for his spirit. And you know it is what it is. It's uh it's really a blessing in disguise because, you know, Jesus said rejoice when you when you're persecuted, when when all all kind of people say all oh, when when these people say all kind of false things about you, when these people persecute you and harass you, I don't know if he he mentioned specifically harass, but you know that's part of it. He was harassed. The disciples were harassed and monitored, observed closely. Jesus was for sure, and his disciples were for sure. And you know. I guess I'm in good company. Hallelujah. But let's get more into this study. But, you know, it's, it's our oppressors who are, like I said, from from Satan to his angels to the demons to the governments and the militaries to the to the private companies to the security, private security to to. Uh, to, to people uh, in stores, to you know, people working regular jobs, to to your neighbors, like to, there's so many people involved in this, and it, you know, it's uh, I'll just say this: look look up. Infraguard. I n f r a, g i g a r d, I n f r a g a r d. Infraguard. It's a company, or it's an organization. Basically, the, it's a lia liaison. It work, work, they work. It's a company basically that works in between the FBI and um, private companies. And so, through this, you know, you know, who knows what they're who knows what they're t they they. Uh, I know they probably tell some crazy stuff about me. I, I, they probably tell these people some crazy stuff about about me in order to get them to do what they do. And, you know, I, I believe a lot of these, I don't, I don't believe all of them, but I believe a lot of these are actually demons in the flesh. And that's separate from fallen angels. Demons are actually uh, hybrid beings. Uh, well, demons, unclean spirits, as the Bible says, demons uh, in general are, you know, the spirits of the Nephilim, according to the book of Enoch, the spirits of the Nephilim. But here in the days that we're living in, just like it, as in the days of Noah, there are these Nephilim, there, there are these hybrid beings. And I believe there's likely many different types of of these hybrid beings who are among us, who are appearing as human, 
you know so i believe a lot of it a lot of it is them but i do believe there's humans involved i believe there's uh fallen angels involved appearing as human but you know it is what it is but you know check out check out what i mentioned it's uh i mean it, it's to the point to where you know they, they have people everywhere I mean, what it, what it really is, is the beast kingdom that's already set up around us. It's a huge web. It's a huge web already set up around us. Around us and among us. And people have no idea. Except the people who are involved. And the people who are involved, most of them have no idea what they're involved in. They think they're doing good. They think they're patriots. They think they're... I don't know. You know. I just know that a lot of the people that do this to me, I mean, because I, you know, God has given me the ability, you know, for a long time, but before I even came to faith, you know, to, to, to read people's body language, to, to be able to read people. And, you know, I, I can just tell by, by observing these people when they, when they're doing what they're doing, when they're harassing me. When they're crossing my path intentionally, and in, with certain colors, with uh, in certain ways, and I'm not gonna get into it, but a lot of these people, or uh, I'll say probably most of them, know exactly what they're doing. They know who I am. They can see. I mean, they they know what they're doing, and they they recognize me when they see me, and I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. You know, and, and it just blows my mind how much, how wicked, how much wickedness is going on. And I forgive them. And I'll, I'll say, say, I'll say this up front to, to whoever is watching this. And, and I don't mean my regular, I don't, I don't mean my brothers and sisters in Christ, but to who, whoever, whether uh, human, fallen angel, demon. Uh, is watching this because because one of my enemies is going to be watching this video. They, I know they watch the videos. I forgive you. I forgive you. I just hope you repent. The Bible says it's the will of God for all to come to repentance. All. And you know what? No matter what's going to happen in the end, no matter what's going to happen in the end, no matter if, uh, you know, the Bible says the repentance wasn't granted to, to the fallen angels and demons, they, they weren't even supposed to exist. The demonic beings, whatever happens in the end, I forgive you. I wish the best for you and may God bless you, Lord, Lord, forgive them. But bless them, bless my persecutors, bless these demons, these fallen angels. Forgive them for their sins, for their sins against me, for their sins against my brothers and sisters in Christ. In Yeshua's name, amen. I forgive y'all. And to some of y'all who may not be familiar with this, some of the, some of the stuff I'm talking about this this might sound crazy I'm out I might sound crazy but it's the word of God this is the truth of the word of God this is the truth of the reality of of uh, what's going on right now of the world that we live in and the the battle that we are in it, you know it's all one big battle of good versus evil choose your side But, but like I said, as we're going to see in this study, we're going to see the judgment on the oppressors of the people of God. We're going to see the judgment on the sinners. And uh, let's just get back into it. Chapter 95, 
Oh, that my eyes were a cloud of waters. That I might weep over you. See, it's the will of God that all come to repentance. It's my will as well. And even if, you know, it's not like no mercy. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't speak for God specifically concerning this. But, you know, he's merciful. And his word is true. And whoever shows mercy will be shown mercy. And it's, and I, I believe stands for everybody. Whoever it is. Oh, that my eyes were a cloud of waters, that I might weep over you and pour down my tears as a cloud of waters so that I might rest from my trouble of heart. Who has permitted you to practice reproaches and wickedness? And so judgment will overtake you sinners. Fear, don't fear the sinners, you righteous. Don't fear the sinners. Don't fear the sinners, you righteous. For again, the Lord will deliver them into your hands, that you may execute judgment upon them according to your desires. That you may execute judgment upon them according to your desires. And first let me go over here to Jeremiah. Uh, because that, what we just read, reminded me of Jeremiah 9 verse 1. It says, Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. But then as far as... Uh, God's people executing judgment on uh, on the sinners, on their enemies. We read here in Psalm 149, and this is about the 144,000. It said, says, uh, starting in verse 5, it says, Let the godly ones exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written. This is an honor for all his godly ones. Praise Yahuwah. Well, it says this is an honor for all his godly ones, which is interesting. I just know from other scriptures, the 144,000 is who, who's carrying out the judgment. Uh, he's, it's God's weapon of war. Potentially other believers will be as well. I'm not sure. So still, still here in chapter 95, it says, don't fear, don't fear the sinners, you righteous. For again, the Lord will deliver them into your hands, that you may execute judgment upon them according to your desires. Woe to you who fulminate anathemas, which cannot be reversed. And let me uh, just look up that word real quick. Who fulminate anathemas. Anathema is uh, something that, something or someone that someone vehement, that one vehement, vehemently dislikes or really dislikes. It's a, a curse, something someone truly dislikes. So it says, Woe to you who fulminate or bring about anathemas, which cannot be reversed, the curses. Healing, therefore, shall be far from, far from you because of your sins. And I believe this will apply to, uh, you know, witches and warlocks who are doing, who are doing uh, magic and witchcraft against Against people. Woe to you who require or repay your who repay your neighbor neighbor with evil, for you shall be repaid according to your works. 
that woe to you who repay your neighbor with evil. For you will be repaid according to your works. Proverbs 20 verse 22 says, Do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for Yahuwah, wait for the Lord, and he will save you. And we read here in 1 Peter 3, starting in verse 8, To sum it up, or to sum up, All of you shall be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were, ca you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. Let's not curse. Let's not try to repay our pay, repay people evil for evil. Let's show them love for evil. That's how we're set apart, holy, different. Woe to you who repay your neighbor with evil, for you shall be repaid according to your works. Woe to you, lying witnesses, and those who weigh out injustice, for suddenly you shall perish. Woe to you, sinners, for you persecute the righteous. For you shall be delivered up and persecuted because of injustice. And heavy, and its yoke upon you will be heavy. Chapter 96. Be hopeful, you righteous. For suddenly the sinners will perish before you. I mean, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. We, I mean, we need to pray for our enemies. We need to forgive our enemies. We need to pray that everyone possible will be saved, but, you know, a lot won't. Be hopeful, you righteous, for suddenly the sinners will perish before you. And you will have lordship over them according to your desires. And this is, we just read this a minute ago. And this next part is in uh, brackets, but I'm going to read it anyway. I'm Again, I'm not sure what the brackets mean. I should have looked it up by now throughout this whole study, but I mean, potentially it wasn't a part of the original manuscripts. I don't know. But it says, And in the day of the tribulation of the sinners, your children shall mount up and rise as eagles, and higher than the vultures will be your nest. And you, you will ascend to the crevices, ascend and enter the crevices of the earth, and the clefts of the rock for, forever as convict, as conies before the unrighteous. And sirens shall sigh because of you and weep. And sirens, and we, we saw this earlier on, earlier on in the book of Enoch, sirens are believed to be, I believe, the, it's, I believe it's probably, uh, I believe it's probably real. I believe it's uh, female demons. Basically, uh, female demons in the flesh. Just like uh, there was the Nephilim. I mean, well, it would be beyond that. You know, well, actually, the book of Enoch says, um, and like I said earlier on in the study, when when it mentioned the sirens, that. The, the two other English translations didn't mention the sirens, but this translation did. And but but what it said in regards to it, it said, uh, uh, if I remember right, the the women, the basically the female Nephilim, their spirits will become sirens on the earth, and that's what sirens are believed to be, like a uh, female. You know, luring, I mean, as uh, the story goes, luring sail sailors to their death. Like female demons, maybe, uh, I mean, I actually, I, I don't know. But if we go over to the other translations for this verse. One says... In the day of trouble of the sinners, your children will mount up and rise like the eagles. Your nest will be higher than the hawk. And you will ascend and go like the squirrels into the recesses of the earth and into the clefts of the rock to eternity before the unjust. 
and they will lament over you and cry like satyrs. Satyrs, and it, this is, you know, kind of the same thing. Satyrs are like a type of mixed being. Um, part, basically, uh, you know, basically part animal, part human. And maybe part uh, angel as well, you know. Um, and there's this... There's been much gen genetic manipulation throughout time. How much more of that is truly going on here in these last days? I mean, who knows what kind of creatures they got? Who knows what kind of creatures that these, that Satan and his angels have, have created through their DNA and human and animal and DNA? You know, is people don't consider this stuff, and the people that don't believe in any of this stuff. Once this stuff starts to come on the scene, the Bible says men's hearts will fail them for fear of looking upon the things that are coming upon the earth. But the other translation here says, In the day of the sufferings of the sinners, your offspring will be elevated and lifted up like eagles. Your nest will be more exalted than that of the Avest. You shall ascend and enter the cavities of the earth. And enter the clefts of the rock forever and ever, like conies from the sight of the ungodly, who shall groan over you, or the sight of the un ungodly, who shall groan over you and weep like sirens. So that translation also mentions sirens, and the other mentions satyrs. And satyr is something that's actually mentioned in, I believe, in Isaiah. It's something that's uh, actually mentioned in the Bible. So fear not, you that have suffered, for healing will be your portion. See, we, we suffer in this life. We, as people of God, suffer a lot in this life. But that's okay. Because this life isn't what matters. The next one is what matters. So fear not that you who have suffered, for healing will be your portion. And a bright light will enlighten you. And the voice of rest you will hear from heaven. Woe to you, you sinners. For your riches make you appear like the righteous. But your hearts convict you of being sinners. It says your riches make you, make you, your riches make you appear like the righteous. I mean, see, see, money can do a lot of things and convince, convince other people that uh, these people are, you know, good people. I mean, example, some of the, Mega church preachers, some of the false prophets who have tons of money. Woe to you, you sinners, who for your riches make you appear like the righteous, but your hearts convict you of being sinners. And this fact shall be a testimony against you for a memorial for your evil deeds. Woe to you who devour the finest of the wheat and drink wine in large bowls. And this is actually mentioned in one of the prophets. Drink wine in sacrificial bowls. And it, and it says, <laughs> and this is one of the, God's classic lines. It says, uh, and, and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny. I will destine you for the sword. <laughs> Woe to you who devour the finest of the wheat and drink wine in large bowls. And tread underfoot the lowly with your might. Woe to you who drink water from every fountain. For suddenly you will be consumed and wither away. Because you have forsaken the fountain of living, of uh, the fountain of life. He said, woe to you who eat the best of the food. And drink the best of the wine. Who drink. Who have water, good water to drink, good and good uh, provisions everywhere you go. It says suddenly you, you will be consumed and wither away because you have forsaken the fountain of life. And the fountain of life. We read in Jeremiah two verse thirteen: For my people have committed two evils; they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters.
to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Jeremiah 17, verse 13. O Yahuwah, the hope of Israel, all who, all who forsake you will be put to shame. Those who turn away on earth will be written down because they have forsaken the fountain of living water, even Yahuwah. And then here, John chapter 4. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who, who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. <laughs> the fountain of living water comes from Jesus. And then, the, then John 7 verse 38 tells us what the living water is. The living water is the Holy Spirit. John seven thirty eight. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of, li of living water. And the next verse says, But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. But the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Woe to you who devour the finest of the wheat, and drink wine in large bowls, and tread underfoot the lowly with your might. Woe to you who drink water from every fountain, for suddenly you will be consumed and wither away, because you have forsaken the fountain of living life, the fountain of life. In other words, the, the living waters. Woe to you who work unrighteousness and deceit and blasphemy. It shall be a memorial against you for evil. In other words, your your own unrighteousness, your own sins are going to be witness against you. Woe to you, you mighty, with who? Woe to you, you mighty, who with might oppress the righteous. It's the, it's the powerful people in this world. It's the people in positions of power, the people with all the money, all the control, who serve Satan and are oppressing the people of God. But we need to pray for their salvation as well. Woe to you, you mighty, who with might oppress the righteous, for the day of your destruction is coming. And those days, many and good days shall come to the righteous in the day of your judgment. Chapter 97. Believe you righteous that the, that the sinners will become a shame and perish in the day of unrighteousness. Make it known to you, be, be known to you, you sinners, that the Most High is mindful of your destruction and the angels of heaven rejoice over your destruction. Repent. Anyone who is living wickedly, anyone who hasn't received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, anyone who hasn't truly given your, your life to God, anyone who's in charge or plays any part of this oppression of the people of God, repent, turn to Him. It says, be it, make it, be it known to you, you sinners, that the Most High is mindful of your judgment. And the angels of heaven rejoice over your destruction. What will you do, you sinners? And where will you flee on that day of judgment? When you hear the voice of the prayer of the righteous. Oh, and this is uh, the fifth seal. What will you do, you sinners? What will you do in the day of judgment when you hear the prayer of the righteous? This is the fifth seal. This is the prayers of the saints that's in Revelation chapter 8. This is the prayers of those who being oppressed and, uh, and, and persecuted. And I believe this is specifically happens uh, the fifth seal uh, during the... Uh, captivity period that's mentioned in Revelation chapter 2. The prayer. The prayer of the righteous. 
the prayers are going to go up. We, we see this in uh, Psalm chapter 18. And God delivers from delivers his people from the oppression, from the captivity, from the torture and death. And he answers those prayers. And then the earth quakes. The sixth seal happens and Jesus comes on the clouds. What will you do, you sinners? And where will you flee on that day of judgment? When you hear the voice of the prayer of the righteous. Yeah, you will, you will fare. It says fare like unto them. In other words, you will. You will be like them. Those who. You, in other words, you will be like them. Them speaking about the people of God who are being oppressed, who are, who are being held captive, etc. It says you will be like them. You will fare, fare like them. Fare like unto them. Yeah, you will fare like unto them. Against whom this word will be a testimony. You have been companions of sinners. Repent. Everyone who is watching this. And in those days, the prayer of the righteous will reach the Lord. And this is what we, again, what we see in Revelation chapter 8. The prayers of the saints with the incense went up before, went up from the angel before God. And in those days, the prayer of the righteous will reach, will reach the Lord. And for you, the days of your judgment will come. That's when judgment comes upon the world. That's when the 144,000 come back with Jesus when he comes on the clouds to execute judgment. This is when the wrath of God starts. This is when the world is going to be laid waste. And in those days, the prayer of the righteous will reach to the Lord. And for you, the days of your judgment will come. And all the words of your unrighteousness will be read out before the great Holy One. Which will be the Father, I believe. And your faces will be covered with shame. And he will reject every work which is grounded on unrighteousness. Woe to you, you sinners, who live on, who live on the mid-ocean and on the dry land, whose remembrance is evil against you. Woe to you who acquire silver and gold in an unrighteous or in, in unrighteousness who unjustly gain riches. Woe to you who, who acquire gold and silver in unrighteousness and say, We have become rich, and with riches we have possessions and have acquired everything that we have desired. See, these people are so blind. These people are so blind. Doing all this wickedness to make all this money because, you know, the Bible says uh, Satan is the god of this world. And, you know, he was able to offer Jesus all the kingdoms of the world if he was able to, if he would be willing to bow down to one, but he didn't. And in the same way, he offers the people of this world and the creatures of this world um all kind of money and fame and riches and success to serve him. So they they do wickedness in order for money, in order to make money. But they're so blind because all that is going to be wiped away very soon. Woe to you, you sinners, who live on the mid-ocean and the dry land, who rem whose remembrance is evil against you. Woe to you who acquire silver and gold and unrighteousness and say... We have become rich, or we have become rich with riches and have possessions, and have acquired everything we desired. And now let us go to go do what we purposed, we, for we have gathered silver, and many are the husbandmen of our houses, and our granaries are full with water. Yeah, and like water, and this is God speaking back to them. He says, "Yeah." And like water, your your lies will flow away. For your riches will not will not abide, but will speedily ascend from you. For you have acquired it all in unrighteousness. 
and you shall be given over to a great curse. Anyone who uh, trusts in their riches, all, all the people, all the wicked people who are doing wickedness in order for money. And it's, you know, it is, I, I've mentioned this, this, uh, this movie a couple of times in, in the last couple of videos, but it, if you haven't seen the work, the movie, uh, They Live, it's an old movie, 1988, called They Live. You can find it online on Vimeo and on other places. But, uh, no, it's basically about demons among us, and 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 he and it, the part that reminded me of it is uh, basically humans selling out to these demons to work for them just for money, just for the mon money and the fame, the success, and this is the exact same thing that happens in this world, and it's the exact same thing that it's talking about right here. And now let's get into chapter ninety-eight. We're going to end in chapter 98. It's a little bit longer than the other chapters, but let's go through it. And now I swear to you, to the wise and to the foolish, for you will have manifold or many experiences on the earth. Various experiences on the earth. For you men will be put, for you men will put on more adornments than a woman, and colored garments more than a virgin. In royalty, and in grandeur, and in power, and in silver, and in gold, and in purple, and in splendor, and in food, they shall be poured out like water. So he's speaking about, you know, he's speaking about the rich people of this world who, you know, who trust in their riches, who, who have all these nice things, who, are, who have all this money. But then it says, therefore, you shall be wanting, you shall be lacking, in other words, in doctrine and wisdom. And they will perish together with their possessions and with all their glory and their, and their splendor and in shame and in slaughter and in great destruction. Their, spirit, their spirits will be cast into the furnace of fire. And I believe he's speaking about the lake of fire. And Jesus mentions specifically the furnace of fire as well. I have sworn to you, you sinners, as a mountain has not become a slave, and a hill does not become the handmaid of a woman, even so, sin has not been sent upon the earth, but man himself has created it. And under a great curse, though shall they fall, who commit it, in other words, uh, those who commit sin, sinners, are going to be under a great curse, and that curse is the lake of fire. And barrenness has not been given to the woman, but on account of the deeds of her own hand, she dies without children. And that woman, you know, often represents the people of God. And on account of wickedness, on account of sin, we won't be in the kingdom. In other words, that's what they're saying. And this part, interesting, interestingly, this part is uh, small. So we're reading this part right here. And we have this little bit left. But it says, I have sworn to you, you sinners, by the Holy Great One, that all your evil deeds are revealed, for, are revealed in the heavens. And that none of your deeds of oppression are covered or hidden. I'm going to read this one more time. And this would also apply to us. I believe this would also apply to us. To everyone who sins. But it says, I have sworn to you, you sinners, by the Holy Great One, that all your evil deeds are revealed in the heavens. And that, you're, and that none of your deeds of oppression are covered or hidden. Verse seven, and do not think that you're, and do not think in your spirit, or say in your heart, that you don't know, or that you don't see, that every sin is every day recorded in heaven in the presence of the Most High. Every sin is recorded. I mean, we we need to take this to mind too. 
And do not think in your spirit or say in your heart that you don't know and that you don't see that every sin, every day is recorded in heaven in the presence of the Most High. From this time forth, you know that your oppression, where you oppress, or with which you oppress, is written down every day until the day of your judgment. I mean, this is going out to those who oppress the people of God. From this time forth, you will know that all your oppression with which you oppress is written down every day until the day of your judgment. Woe to you, you fools, for through your folly you will perish, and you transgress against the wise. One more time. Woe to you, you fools, for through your folly you will perish, and you transgress against the wise. Let's, let's be wise. Let's not be foolish. And so good hap will not be your portion. And now you know that you are prepared for the day of destruction. Where you do not hope to live, you sinners. But you will depart and die. For you know no ransom. And you, you are prepared, for you are prepared for the day of great judgment. For the day of tribulation and great shame for your spirits. And so one more time, verse 10, here in Enoch chapter 98. And so good hap will not be your portion. And now know that you are prepared for the day of destruction. Where you do not hope to live, you sinners. But you will depart and die. For you know no ransom. For you are prepared for the day of the great judgment. For the day of tribulation and great shame for your spirits. Woe to you, you obstinate of heart. Who work wickedness and eat blood. And I believe this is speaking about. I believe it's speaking about. Uh, adrenochrome. And if you don't know what that is. I mean. You, you can look it up. But there's a chemical in blood. Um, that. Has to do with adrenaline. That if you consume this blood, and I don't know too many details, uh, whether drink it or or inject it, I've heard different things. But if this chemical is in it, if uh, the, this chemical, if this, this what's it called adrenochrome is high in the blood, is the the adrenaline. Uh, it it gives a high like a cocaine type high, and and these rich, famous, wicked people do this. They consume the blood, and the highest. Con I mean, it, you, basically, from you know what I've heard, the highest uh, amount of this this chemical, this adrenochrome. comes comes from children and when their adrenaline is the highest so these wicked people these demons these fallen angels and, and these wicked humans torture children make them suffer and at the point and make them fear because the, because it's about adrenaline and, and and when they're the most fearful and in the most pain, they take the blood, they kill them and take the blood and consume it. At least this is, you know, this is what I've heard. This is my understanding. On this, I've I've never done too much research into it, but. I believe this is what it's speaking of here. I believe it's likely what it's speaking of here in the book of Enoch. I mean, this is something that's been happening for thousands of years. Woe to you, you obstinate of heart, who work wickedness and eat blood.
From where do you have good things to eat and drink and to be filled? From all the good things which the Lord Most High has placed in abundance on the earth. Therefore, you will have no peace. Woe to you who love the deeds of unrighteousness. So why do you hope for good? Why do you hope for good hap? Or good... Um... I don't know the definition of hap exactly, but... So... So why do you hope for good to your... Good to... To, to happen to yourselves. Good to come to you. Know that you will be delivered into the hands of the righteous. And they shall cut off your necks. And slay. And slay you. And have no mercy on you. Woe to you who rejoice in the tribulation of the righteous. For no grave will be dug for you. So one more time. Let me bring it back to Let me bring it back to verse 11. Woe to you, you obstinate of, obstinate of heart, who work wickedness and eat blood. From where from where do you have good things to eat and drink and to be filled? From all the good things that the Lord Most High has placed in abundance on the earth. Therefore you will have no peace. Woe to you who love the deeds of unrighteousness. Why do you hope for good to you? Why do you hope for good to come to yourselves? Know that you will be delivered into the hands of the righteous, and they shall cut off your necks and slay you, and have no mercy on you. Woe to you who rejoice in the tribulation of the righteous. Woe to you who rejoice in the tribulation of the righteous. And you know, I'm not trying to speak. I'll, I'll just say this, you know. These people, a lot of these people who uh, harass, a lot of these people involved in this, uh, in this gang stalking, like I said, they I, I can read it on them. I, they, they know exactly what they're doing, and a lot of and most of them, I, I would say at least probably half of them, I can just tell by the look on their face that they just seem so amused. They seem so amused to to harass another person. It's, it's such wickedness, man. They seem they're just so so amused at what they're doing, and by the by the looks on their faces, they know exactly. Uh, they knew they knew who I am. They're you know they're they're showing my picture or something you know. I mean it's crazy. I mean it's, it's just crazy. It's crazy me even thinking about it, but but it's real. And it's not only me that it's happening to. It's many people of God, but I mean it's. But we see here the judgment that's going to come upon them. So we need to forgive them. We need to ask God to forgive them. It says, Woe to you who love the deeds of unrighteousness. Why do you hope for good hap unto yourselves? Know that you will be delivered into the hands of the righteous, and they will cut off your necks and slay you, and have no mercy on you. Woe to you who rejoice in the tribulation of the righteous, for no grave will be dug for you. Woe to you who set it not, or set aside the words of the righteous, or set them aside, like set it not, like like, uh, like they don't matter. I believe I, I don't know the exact definition or not, but I, who set it not? Woe to you who set it not or set aside. It like, don't matter the the words of the righteous, for you will have no hope in life. Woe to you who write down lying and godless words. For they write down their lies that men may hear them and act godlessly toward their neighbor. And this is exactly this is exactly what is what is going on in in the case in the case of me and, and, and many people in the case of this gang stalking program program, it says, Woe to you who write down lying and godless words, for they write down their lies. 
that men may hear them and act godlessly toward their neighbor. Like I said, who knows the exact stuff that is being told told against me and told about me to these people. And not, not only me, and I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm special or anything, but I mean, this happens to many of the people of God. But it's, it clearly says here that there's that there is people in charge uh, telling lies to to the people who are working for them about the righteous in order in order to for them to act godlessly toward their neighbor. So one more time, woe to you who write down lying and godless words, for they write down the lies that men may hear them and act godlessly toward their neighbor. Therefore, they will have no peace, but die a sudden death. And this also lines up with uh, Scripture, because, you know, the, the people who are in charge of this, you know, I mean, there's many levels to it, but the people more up top, you know, the Bible says when they're saying peace and security, destruction will come upon them suddenly and they will not escape. Therefore, you will have no peace, but die a sudden death. And that's the end of chapter 89. That's the end of this study here in the book of Enoch, chapters 95 through 98. We went through a lot. And this is probably one of the more, you know, the enemy don't like this stuff talked about. So I'll be, I'll be surprised if I can even share this on Facebook. But we'll see. We'll see. Brothers and sisters, let's be prepared for the return of the Lord. Let's walk in all the ways of God and serve Him with all our heart. God is going to deliver us. God is going to bring about justice. And at the same time, we gotta, we have to consider within ourselves. God is going to bring about justice. The Word says, you know, every sin is made known in heaven. We need to consider this. We need to make sure we're right with God. We need to walk in His ways. We need to be humble. We need to be blameless. Let's serve God with all our heart. Let's be ready. Let's be right with Him and do His will in all things. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to Him. Give your life to Jesus today. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. Most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means to turn away from your sins and turn to God. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and you call out to Him to forgive you, to save you, and you truly mean it. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. And He will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.